Welcome to the Prophetic Planning Podcast, where you get prophetic insight and strategy for your business. Have you ever gotten a plan or vision from God, but didn't quite know what to do with it? Prophetic planning gives you divine instruction for the vision that God has given you for your business. As business owners, we're called to do exactly what God has called us to do, and prophetic planning helps us to manage the plans that God has given us. If you're looking for wisdom, strategy, and how to be effective in your endeavors within your marketplace industry, look no further than a prophetic planning podcast. To subscribe or to find out more information, visit KBN. Club. Good morning, Kingdom Business Network. You know what they say? They say that your network is your net worth. But some of us are mismanaging our relationships in pursuit of getting to the bag. Today, we are going to discuss how God biblically desires us to handle relationships in our business using 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. Welcome to Prophetic Planning, where we hear the voice of God to plan for our businesses using prophetic journaling. Join us for a prophetic devotional and journal prompts that will help you tackle areas in your business where you need Holy Spirit led. Wisdom. My name is Chanel E. Martin, and I'm going to go ahead and jump right on in and pray us in. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this word. We thank you for your wisdom. We thank you, Father, for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins so that we could be saved. We thank Thank you for your prophetic utterance. We thank you that we have access to the blood of Jesus and your throne. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this broadcast today, into this YouTube. Uh, We thank you uh, for the word that you have to bring forth. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. And so today we are talking about how to manage your business business relationships God's way from the prophetic planning manage and multiply series. So in order to uh, stay in alignment, I need you to pull out your Bible and everyone please turn to first Corinthians chapter 13 verses one through eight. That is first Corinthians chapter 13 verses one through eight. And We are going to read it together because like I always say, you need the word of God. Okay. You need the word of God. It always has to coincide with prophecy. There is no prophecy without the written word of God. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get us started uh, into reading first Corinthians chapter 13 verses one through eight. If I could speak all the languages of the earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but didn't love others, I would be nothing. Verse three, if I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Verse seven, love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Prophecy and speaking in unknown language and special knowledge will become useless, but love will last forever. We just got through from reading 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. I know what you're thinking. This is supposed to be a word on managing our business relationships, but not about love. But let me remind you that you can't be in any type of a relationship if there is no love. 
Because if you go out here and try to operate God's business without love, then I'm going to let you know something straight up. You have already failed. It's impossible to manage a relationship properly if you do not have love at the forefront. Now, I'm not talking about romantic love, y'all. I'm talking about the love that covers a multitude of sin. The love that we just read about in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. Actually, it's even better, y'all. We find a rule book on how we are to operate as business owners and manage all of our relationships. Now, let's talk about these business relationships, okay? Including, y'all, the customers that pay on time and work well with your business. <laughs> I'm about to come down your street. The customers that get on our last nerves, that breach contracts and agreements and want more out of the product and service and want more out of the product or service than they pay for. How many of you have incur incurred that? Where you brought on a client or a customer and they wanted steak and potatoes, but you know, they got uh, a cereal budget, right? <laughs> also, the partnerships and collaborations that have been a dream to work with and the partnerships and collaborations that have left you feeling used and abused. Anyone ever went through something like that? The vendors that you have invested in that have delivered on time and without you having to nag or beg for your stuff, listen, we love those vendors. Or the vendors that you have invested in and they took your money and either delivered a subpar service or never delivered at all. How many of you have managed some of those types of relationship as a business owner? Well, what I love about 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 8, it gives us an answer to every single scenario on how to manage our relationships in business to yield godly success. And y'all, I'm going to keep on saying it until you believe it, right? I, I need you to go ahead and write this in the comments. This year will be what? Your wealthiest year yet if you manage and multiply. And that also includes your relationship. In verses one through three, Apostle Paul, and I love y'all. I really love how Apostle Paul be getting us together. Apostle Paul begins by getting us all the way together. Listen, I don't even know how you can even read Corinthians um, and without feeling like, oh, let me just let me just pat my edges back down. OK, Apostle Paul starts by getting us all, all together, basically saying to us as Christian business owners, y'all, it don't matter how big your email is. How much money your company is making, how much you give to your church or your community, how anointed you are, how good you can order. How many people fall out when you wave your hands or even how hard you have worked. Y'all, if you are not operating out of the basic principles of love, your business means nothing. Let me go. Let me go run that scripture back to y'all. If I could speak all the languages of earth and, and of the angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clinging symbol. Basically, he's saying, like, if you ain't got love, you just out here just loud and wrong. OK, if I had the gift of prophecy and if I understand all of God's secret plans and possess all the knowledge, the Lord said, he don't care how prophetic yourself is. How anointed, how well you can pray. And if you had all the faith that can move mountains, but you didn't love others, y'all, it would be nothing. If you gave everything to the poor and even sacrificed your body, you could boast about it. But if you didn't love others, Paul says, I would have gained nothing. And you know, there are some of you who may have even worked yourself out of loving those you are supposed to be serving. You started out um, in your business in love with it and in love with the people. But somewhere along the years, you got tired and burnt out. Who am I talking to? You, you ain't got to admit it to me. You can just, you know, talk to yourself about it. Like, like when you first started the business, it was like, oh my goodness, God, thank you for this business. Then you got to working in the business and working with the people that were assigned to the business. And now you're like, wait a minute, God, this ain't what I signed up for. Yeah. 
See, what happens is you start forgetting the reason that God even positioned you in the business. And it was for, for you to become a pillar of love for his glory, for the industry that he placed you in. Look, I'm about to give you a tip real quick. That's about to just, for somebody listening to me, it's about to dramatically increase your revenue in your business. Here's your tip. I bet the moment you start back loving your business and the relationships that it brings, both your customers, your partners, and even your collaborators, you will see God's hand move quickly on your behalf. Y'all, God is not in the business of promoting people who don't love his people. Do you realize that that angry and irate customer is still God's people? OK, do you realize that that person that gets on your nerves uh, that you partner with and they didn't deliver on their end of the bargain is still God's people? Do you realize that the people that breach contract with you are still God's people? Do you realize the ones that called you a scammer and, and anything else you could think of? Those are still God's people and you are still commanded to love them. You are still commanded to love them. <laughs> Now that you understand that you and your business are nothing without love infused in your relationship, I need you to just go ahead and put, I'm nothing without love. Just type that in the comments. I am nothing without love because I need you to understand this because some of you have professed with your mouth that you don't need nobody. You have decided that you are going to do this thing by yourself. But if you do not have love, if you got a heart and heart, if you are bitter and full of a Fence, you have nothing. You might as well shut your business down. Go get a job because your business is nothing without love infused in your relationships. Now, let's go ahead and just jump right on into these principles. OK, I'm about to break down what God tells us love is and how it relates to your business, how to use this as a blueprint to manage your business relationships. All right, so we're gonna start with love is patience. Now, this is the first one that I have to throw a red flag on the plate. How many times have we, and I'm gonna put we in this, how many times have we mismanaged relationships and business simply because we have been impatient? I'm gonna raise my hand. I'm gonna raise my hand. I get it. You want what you want. But if the tables were turned on you, you'd want someone to have patience with you. And I'm not even talking about the impatient for God to show up and for God to bless you and for God to do what he do. I'm talking about you are doing business with someone. You are in relationship with someone, whether you are the client or the service provider or the product distributor, right? Or you are on the receiving end or you are the vendor. However, the relationship manifests itself and you have decided that you want what you want when you want it. Y'all know we good. We good for, let me tell you what we good for. Cause I'm guilty of this. We are so good for, right? Hiring graphic designers, service providers, web designers. They asking us for stuff. They asking us for pictures. They asking us for text. They asked us to, re to review edits. And then we decide that, you know, we got life going on. So we don't even say nothing to them. Then all of a sudden we pop up and we like, hey, I want my stuff in like 24 hours because you've been impatient and they've been reaching out to you. They've been emailing you. They've been trying to get the stuff, but you want people to be on your time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's not you. <laughs> so. Love is patient and you need to be patient with people that you are in business relationships with. It also says, and kind. So we got the love patient, love is patient. And then we got the, and kind. Yeah. Yeah. That part. Love is patient and kind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, Kindness can take us a long way. And in a season where everyone is prone to clap back at injustice or wrongdoing, why don't you try returning a response that is laced with kindness? I can't tell you how many times an irate customer or client shared some unwarranted. Listen, because some of these some of these harsh words y'all get are warranted, but some unwarranted harsh words with me. I can't say that I've always gotten it right. You know, the Lord's working on me. OK, but I can say 
that Holy Spirit has always checked me when I was operating out of my feelings versus out of kindness. Think about how you could respond more kindly, both as a customer and as a business owner. I'm just going to put it out on, on front street. Some of y'all are horrible customers. You're horrible customers. You nag, you complain, you want things done your way. You literally took the customer. It's always right out of context. There's a way that you can speak to people, that you can communicate with people, right? You don't have to be nasty when talking with your service providers. Think about how you can get what you want while being kind. And some of some of us are, are, are mean business owners. We don't have any flexibility. You got to do what we said, do. You got to go through our processes. You're not willing to negotiate or even uh, meet the customer where they are. And if anybody tries to go against it, Look, I done seen it all. We, we are so mean to each other. We start screenshotting and putting each other on blast and putting other businesses on blast, even without even coming and communicating with them. Y'all, that is just mean. Actually, it's downright evil. So, y'all, love is patient and kind. Let's talk about what else love is in your business relationships. Y'all love is not jealous. Let me pause and tell you all to take a deep breath right here. Look, I'm going to do a deep breath because I, I have to address this. I have seen jealousy kill more potential business relationships and collaborations than I can count. You see, jealousy, it isn't always manifested in a way that you can identify. Y'all, sometimes jealousy shows up as a, I just don't like that person or I can't put my finger on it. You try to hide it with your so-called discernment when in fact, it's none of those. You are jealous probably because they are presumably doing something or they have something something you want or feel like you should have. And it's irritating the part of you that is void. It also shows up in screenshots that you send into your friends and, and your group chat when you nitpick the mess out of someone else's business and brand. And you haven't even went and talked to them about it. You haven't offered some suggestions, some resources. Better yet, you ain't even prayed for them. And, 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 and also it shows up when you can't understand why God is blessing someone and not you. And you keep on finding things wrong with them all along. God put them in your path for you to connect, learn, and glean from. And y'all, we let jealousy get in the way of what God has next. God will use people that irritate the mess out of you to pull something up out of you. But instead, you are sitting there with your jealous, offended self and not even receiving the impartation and the correction that comes with that relationship. <sighs> Y'all, I've seen it happen. We have got to stop operating from a place of jealousy and call a spade a spade. It's not discernment. It's you, you jealous. All right, y'all. It says love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Okay. So you, 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 you're popping in. We're talking about how to manage your business relationships God's way. <laughs> and I love this because it's checking all of us. I'm just the messenger, but the Lord has checked me on this too. Now, I'm going to say this. I totally, totally believe in showing up and showing up in excellence, okay? I even believe in walking and operating your business confidently. I believe that we all got dominion and we need to step in our authority. But y'all, there's a way to do that in love. What I hate most about social media is the amount of business owners putting other business owners down in a way to promote their business. I've even said this myself, like you don't have to put somebody else's industry, business, brand down to promote your business or brand or ministry. You might have had your little success and I'm going to call it little success because Paul said you got nothing if you got love. So I'm, I'm just I'm going to be generous and say little success and may have made your little six, seven, eight figures. But if you don't sit yourself down and eat some humble pie, you will find it slipping through your 
hands and trust me, God will humble you soon enough. I'm going to tell you something I hate. I'm just going to, I'm just going to go out here and say it. I hate when God elevates someone, someone to great influence and they do something amazing and you start nitpicking or we start nitpicking. Can we just be so proud and so rude and so boastful and so mean and so unkind to people operating in their God given gifts and talents and it's horrible and it reflects back on you. And really, it shows the discontentment that you have with yourself and where you currently are. Because I'm going to tell you something. If you get some business about you, you have no time to be worried about the business of somebody else. Now, let's keep going. It does not demand its own way. All right. Love does not demand its own way. This rule can apply to your relationships that you have with your vendors and partners. And we kind of talked about this earlier. I need to ask you one question. Are you flexible? You ain't got to answer. Just you can, you can just ask yourself, are you flexible? Do you always have to be right? Is it your way or your way? <laughs> I've worked with so many people who are so bent on the customer is always right and demanding services outside of the boundaries of the service provider. Y'all, we need to honor the systems and boundaries that are set up, especially if they are fair. You do not have to make demands for things to happen. Y'all, we got to quit having so many demands and work together and collaborate. I'm telling you, you could be such an irate customer, trust and believe that other business owners are talking about you. They are they are running your name saying, oh, don't work with uh, Prophet Chanel. I'm going to use myself because she she be going off on, on, on the, you know what I'm saying? Like, do you want that to be your reputation that you are difficult to work with? I ain't even going to lie, y'all. I got some folks that I got. I got a list of do not service just because of how horrible they treated us in our process. All right. So we just got through from time. I does the, the not demand its own way. Y'all, it is not irritable. Okay. It is not irritable. Y'all, y'all ever work with someone that is always irritable? Oh my gosh. Or are you always irritable as a boss or as a leader? Does everything trigger you and you annoyed by everything? Like everything is just like, annoying. I need you to take this as a sign that your attitude needs to be adjusted and adjusted fast. If every little thing anyone does or says to you triggers you to irritation, you should probably fix that ASAP. It will make managing any kind of relationship with you nearly impossible. Listen, sometimes it's you. Sometimes you're the problem. You're trying to figure out why you're not closing any deals, why you're not selling anything, why pick customers aren't coming to you, why no one has done word of mouth about your business. Because when people come in contact with you, you got an attitude. Y'all need to check this attitude stuff and take accountability and responsibility on how you are making other people feel when they come into your presence. This. Do you understand that people will forgive the mistakes of a kind person, but will bash the person that got the attitude? All right, let's keep going. Love keeps no record of being wrong. Now, this is for someone. I, 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 I'm talking to someone. And if you want to say it's me, you can let me know. You can put it. It's me. If I'm talking to you, y'all, move on. Like, really move on. You keep playing the betrayal, the frustration, the lack of fulfilling the agreement over and over in your head. Every time you see this person in person or if they show up on your social timeline, you get irritated. Every time someone mentions their name, you make a face. Your body tenses up, right? Anybody, look, am I the only one? Am I the only one? You, you mention certain people, I'm like, mm. Whole, whole, whole body just, just contort, right? <laughs> Move on. Forget about it and remove the record. And please, for the love of God, for the love of God, don't form pure hate groups. 
Now, what are those? Those are groups that are formed because you and the same person or system wronged you. And so you go find other people that hate the same person that, that, that you need to move on from. And so now y'all got a group of people who don't like one person. That's really actually what formed you. And, and y'all have discussions and group chats. Y'all, we got to stop that. Mm -mm. Yes. You've got to manage that part of those relationships too. We're talking about how to manage your business relationship God's way. And these are things that people aren't talking about. These are things that God is seeing, okay? And that he is preventing his people from coming in your presence to help you multiply what God is giving you so that you can see much fruit because we don't know how to handle his people. All right, on to the next one. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Let's talk about this. In the day and age where everyone and everything is being exposed and everyone and everything has an opinion about what's going on with everything and everyone, I want to caution you real quick, real quick. If you rejoice at the downfall of others, oh, how quickly you may find yourself in the seat of judgment. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me because, you know, I don't mind telling my business. But I remember being extremely judgmental when God started calling me deeper into him. And y'all, that's what happens. Like as soon as we get like a deeper awakening, I don't know, sometimes somehow we become part of the elite group of Christians and everybody else is just sinner and heathens. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe y'all ain't never been there, but I have. I'm so glad God delivered me out of that. Right. It was a religious spirit where I was the judge and the jury claiming that I was following the word of God. Hmm. But what God challenged me was this. Was I judging what I saw someone else do, somebody else's business, somebody else's performance, somebody else's quality from a place to love? Or was I, 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 or was I so, so happy, right? When the false prophet or leader, y'all know we love calling kind of folks false prophets. My God, somebody call for them. They're a false prophet. Like, go sit down somewhere. Would I be happy when the false prophet or the false leader or anyone I felt like uh, it was too true for them to be blessed was exposed? Uh, let me run that back. Some of us, we just don't understand why people are so blessed and we want people to be hurt so bad and so down and out. We can't wait for them to be exposed. Y'all, instead of praying, you know what I did? I sold Discord. This was old Chanel. I'm so glad I've been delivered, right? I had something to say about it. I couldn't wait to share. I couldn't wait to pass the tea. I see that happening now. And what did I say? If you rejoice in the downfall of others, oh, how quickly you may find yourself in the seat of judgment. Y'all, I realized soon, soon and very soon that I was rejoicing in their downfall. I was excited for their truth, their bad truth to be revealed to the world. And instead, it, instead of wanting the truth of God's love for this person to be revealed, I wanted their sins on display for judgment. My God, this is what I see many of us. We can't wait to share the tweet, to share the post, to comment, to write think pieces about how prophet so-and-so and pastor so-and-so and evangelist. We love destroying and tearing down God's people calling it. You call to expose. Have you prayed yet? Have you asked for God's love and mercy to rain down on that person? So if they are in out of alignment with God, that they will have a divine encounter. Has that even come out of your mouth yet before you start sowing discord? Again, let me remind you, oh, how quickly you may find yourself in the seat of judgment. If you stay that way. My God. <laughs> <laughs> my God, my God, we talking about how to manage business, business relationships, God's way, not your way, not Chanel's way, but God's way. Because remember, you are called to serve God's people and he loves them. And he is watching how you manage those relationships. He is watching what you say about them just because that person may not know how you really feel about them. God is judging your hearts. He sees it and you got to fix it. 
And so love never gives up, never loses faith. It is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. How many relationships, and I want you to think about this, how many relationships could have been saved with just a simple conversation? There are some relationships that God has sent an answer to what you just prayed about. But in light of our cutoff culture, you have decided that you were going to give up or AKA go ghost on him. Right. Or you need time or pull back. Now, I'm not saying that you should endure abuse from someone. However, however, comma. We are good, y'all. We are good as good old Holy Spirit tongue, tongue speaking Christians. We are good to say God sent someone to you in one season. And in the next, this is a person from hell. I have watched it. I have watched it. I have seen it. We are honoring one person. And because of maybe some of their downfalls or maybe some of their sins got exposed, but yours didn't. Now they from hell. When in fact, if you would have had a conversation, you could have a better understanding of what was going on with them. So you could administer grace. Some of you need to go back and give grace another chance in your relationship. And let me tell you this. If this was on the flip side. You can't run from conversations anymore. You will need to be open and transparent with people so that the relationship can be restored. Y'all, we lock each other out and give up on each other when the Bible tells us to do the exact opposite. We so good to be talking about our mental health and boundaries and you don't even know what that person is going through. You don't even know what that person has been through. You don't even know what that person is suffering through. Are you that self-centered that you, for someone that you looked up to, for someone that you were in relationship, for someone that you did business with, for someone that you said was God sent, now all of a sudden you don't like them because they had a moment in time where life started life and for them. But you decided that because they didn't operate the way you felt that they should operate, that you didn't have to love them anymore. When God tells us that love never gives up, love never loses faith, it is always hopeful and it endures through every single circumstance. Oh, my God. God, God. Real quick, y'all, we're going to pray. Because I believe in this moment, we have to repent for mishandling our relationships. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we just repent. We repent. We repent for each and every relationship that we have mishandled. We repent for, for a lack of communication on our feelings. Lord, we repent for every way that we have let pride uh, get in the way of us handling people better. Lord, we repent for not loving your people well. Lord, we repent for asking you to bless us with more customers customers and more and more uh, clients, meaning that you want us to, you meaning that we want you to send us more people, but only to get abused and mistreated by us in the name of Jesus, because we are struggling in our heart posture towards your people. Lord, right now, your word says that you can give uh, uh, by way of Holy Spirit, love the Holy Spirit. We are asking that you can administer love to us right now. Now, in the name of Jesus, wash the hurt and the pain away from everyone in business that has harmed us, that has hurt us, that has frustrated us, that has judged us, that has left us. Thank you, Lord, that you are restoring love at the forefront, that before we get on a client call, that we will answer the phone, get on the Zoom in love, that before we ask for anyone to buy anything from us, that we do it from a place of love. And right now, Lord, we forgive right now anyone that has hurt us, 
that has harmed us and our businesses, former clients, former customers, former people that we have collaborated, former business deals, anything that is holding up the way we manage your relationships biblically. Lord, we just ask for forgiveness and we release those people from the grips of our offense and unforgiveness. Change us, oh God. Renew our heart and our mind. Purify us. May the blood of Jesus wash away every pain in our heart and in our soul. May you give us a strategy on how to love again. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, that as we begin to love your people more, that you will send more and more people, that we will have favored business relationships, that we will have favor with our clients and customers, that we will have favor in all places, that our favor will go before us, that our name will be in a win, that people will have good things to say about our character and about our business because we showed up in love. And at any place where we make mistakes, love will correct all. It is in this, in Jesus' name we ask and we pray. Amen. Amen. And so I need, I know y'all, I know it's easy to want to do things by yourself. That gives you the ability to hide from your insecurities and not have to manage your relationships properly. Why? Y'all, because relationships are, they're unpredictable unpredictable and out of your control. And most of us got control issues. What if I told you that your wealth was directly connected to someone you mismanaged? Let me run it again. What if I told you the part of your wealth was connected to someone that you mismanaged? Would you be willing to reconcile for God? And especially if it would lead to this being your wealthiest year yet. And hold on, let me just say this. And when I say mismanaged, I'm not talking about a mismanaging, meaning that you were publicly mean to them, meaning that, that they knew that you were meaning to them. I'm talking about the mismanagement of your heart posture towards that person. Again, there are doors. We prayed about open doors today. There are doors that God wants to open, but the person that, that wants to open the door for you, the guy has to open the door for you, 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 you messed over. <laughs> would you be willing to reconcile for God? And especially if this will lead to you, to this being your wealthiest year yet. Y'all, you can't love God and hate his people and expect God to bless you with success. You can't love God and hate his people and expect him to bless you with success. It's time, y'all, that you manage your business relationships God's way. Now, <laughs> I pray this blessed you. I pray this blessed you and that it corrected you. Because did you know that uh, correction can lead to wealth? Especially correction concerning our heart posture. Some of you looking for the, the strategy. You're looking for the angle. You're looking for the perfect pitch. And really, God just wants you to treat his people better. That's it. Do right by my people. And I bless you. I'll increase you. He still loves you, even if you raggedy with his folks. But the chances of him blessing you and you mean and nasty and your heart is wrong and you jealous and you bitter. And even though you're not saying it to that person, but you're talking about people behind their back and you're judging people and you're delighting in folks downfall. And you always got something to say. I'm telling you a few years ago, the Lord corrected me, told me, stop putting, stop putting my, my, my mouth on his anointed ones. I'm talking about the ones that God has elevated in this season, regardless of if they are doing godly things with their elevation. I don't put my mouth on nobody. 
Because what if God has a meeting arranged or a setup arranged with them? I'm just going to leave y'all on that. Some of y'all need to repent for how y'all be talking about these celebrities and these pastors and these leaders and these people of influence because you don't like the way God is allowing them to, to navigate their own healing and deliverance. But you want influence too. You want God to blow in your name too. But you don't even understand what comes with that. You're asking for something and bashing the, the example that God sent you in the same breath. And we've got to stop doing that. Managing your business relationship starts with your heart. And I believe that's why Holy Spirit and God is correcting us on that. God wants to send you people. He wants to send you wealth. But what are you going to do with the people that he sends you, how are you going to manage them? So it's time that we go to God and ask him to help us manage and, and multiply our relationships this year. I want you to pull out your uh, prophetic journal. Look, your God bless the scribe prophetic journal. You can order one of these from God bless the uh, And we're going to take about three minutes to seek God and you're going to write down what God is saying about your business so that this year can be your wealthiest year yet. So I want you to pray the prompt and um, to God. Yes, we're talking to God. OK, he got the answers and write down what you see, feel, hear or know. We believe that in this moment, God is speaking directly to us by faith. We do not discount what we are shown. OK, OK. Now I'm going to pray, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for the word that has gone forth. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this moment. We ask that you speak to us. Lord, your word says that my sheep know my voice. So Lord, we are your sheep and we are hearkening unto your voice that you would give us guidance and correction because you have said that this will be our wealthiest year yet. And Lord, we are open to managing every aspect that needs to be managed and multiplying everything that you've given us. Yes, Lord. So I thank you, Father. I ask that the spirit of prophecy flow to wherever we are, that you open prophetic portals so that we can hear like never before. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. All right, guys. So I'm gonna give you the first prompt and you're gonna take your journal out and you're gonna write down what God has shown you, okay? So the first prompt is God... What relationships do I need to manage and how? God, what relationships do I need to manage and how? We're going to give you three minutes and then we will come back and get to the next prompt. All right, let's go, y'all.
right? Look, mine was getting good. I don't know about y'all's. <laughs> okay, we're going to go to the next prompt. We're going to take about two minutes. Um, and the next prompt is, again, you're going to write down what God is saying to you. God, what is one wealth producing thing that I need to do this week? Because listen, we are planning our businesses with God. So God, what is one wealth producing thing that I need to do this week? All right, I'll see you guys in about three minutes. This episode of Prophetic Planning was brought to you by Her Beauty Regimen. Introducing refreshed hair growth oil from Her Beauty Regimen. Our scientifically formulated hair oil is designed to nurture and fortify your hair, promoting stronger, healthier hair growth. Experience the transformation with the product trusted for its effectiveness and quality. Refreshed Hair Growth Oil is your solution to help you grow longer, thicker, stronger hair. Visit Her Beauty Regimen today to begin your journey towards revitalized, flourishing hair at HerBeautyRegimen.com. All right, shout out to Ryan Ruffner for the music that we use for our journal prompts. You can find him on YouTube and he has an album out. I believe it's on Spotify and Apple Music. So make sure you check him out. Okay, let's get into these prompts. Anybody want to share? You can drop it in the comments of uh, what God showed you. Um, I'm going to go first. So remember the first prompt was, God, what relationships do I need to manage and how? And this is one thing that God has really been on me about. But of course, I'm going to be transparently as I can. Um, he said, daughter, be open to new friends. Um, this is an area that you have struggled in out of fear of being misunderstood. You drop friendships because of lack of intentionality. Everyone doesn't have to be your BFF. And then of course, that's what I need to manage better. Then he told me how the Lord told me, he said, send um, check-ins to your friends create a reminder and a list of everyone that you need to do check-ins with and just text and ask how they are doing and how you can pray for them. I have, so just, I, so you guys know a little bit about me. I live by uh, reminders, uh, alarms and calendar invites. And so like at any moment you could be with me and the alarm is going to go off because that's the way I remember stuff um, for everything. So look, the Lord is like, just, just plug them into the system. 
Okay. So I got to, I got to get better. Um, and sometimes it's, I struggle because I am super busy and my life looks different, but I'm excited because I'm going to reconnect with some people that I've lost touch with. And I think that's going to give me the outlet that I need. So prompt number two, God, what is one wealth producing thing that I need to do this week? And the Lord told me, he said, you know, continue studying and learning about content. Um, said, look up studio set design to flip your office into a studio. This will be temporary for another location is coming, but you will only, um, and he said, but you'll only need to buy a few things at a time. So uh, we turned to our guest room, um, Y'all, this hair. <laughs> we turned our guest room into like an office. So it has like a bed and 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 a desk and stuff is where I'm at right now. And I had my own, I had another office offsite, but Lord moved me home for a season uh, just because I need to handle some things here. And uh he told me that I could flip my this bedroom, take the bed out, put it in a basement temporarily, and flip this into a studio. So I pretty much have everything that I need. Uh, to, I, I I have everything that I need to make it, to make a set. So y'all might be seeing something. We're supposed to work on me. My husband's supposed to do it this weekend. So I will hopefully soon y'all see like a new design. I don't know. That's not my strength, but I'm going to get on Pinterest. Y'all, we have been saying that, um, 2024 is our wealthiest year yet. Look, go ahead and just type it in the comments. 2024 is my wealthiest year yet. If you have not been saying that to yourself, then you, you look, just start today. And the conditions were if you manage and multiply. And so we've been in a manage and multiply series on prophetic planning. And guess what guys, we'll be back here again, live at 8 AM Eastern standard time on kingdom business network. So make sure that you tune in and, um, it was great. We'll see y'all next time. Bye. This episode of Prophetic Planet was brought to you by Kingdom Business Network Healthcare. Hey, entrepreneurs, ever worried about finding affordable healthcare while building your dream? Kingdom Business Network has your back. Introducing KBN Healthcare, quality health plans for you and your business, big or small. Nationwide coverage, extensive doctor networks, all at your fingertips. Visit kbnhealthcare.com today and join the community where your health and wealth grow together. Kingdom Business Network Healthcare, caring for you as you build your brand.